Remember that one time that Gonzaga was coming to the Big 12 and with Washington State and Oregon State? Whatever, whatever happened to that? This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome into Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas. Thank you for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Let me first say that this, for the first time, I am proud to wear a Baylor shirt on this show. Things went well for the Bears in basketball last night. We'll get to that in the third segment. Second segment, how do we ensure Texas and Oklahoma do not make the Big 12 championship game? Well, let's kick it off with something I thought about today. I, I want to paint you a picture a bit here. May I? May I paint you a picture? I'm sitting in my cubicle at work. And for perspective, I've got a couple things hanging on the walls in there. So I, I want to build you a computer in front of me at my desk pondering. I do a lot of that. Do you ever at work, you sit down and you think I should be doing work, but I'm just kind of thinking about random things. <laughs> and today I thought, huh, remember that one time, like t- two or three weeks ago when Gonzaga was going to the big 12 and now it's November 7th and Gonzaga is still not going to the big 12. Now in the middle of that, something that I, I didn't miss, but I didn't ever really report on or talk about Brett, your Mark apparently met with Mark few and Gonzaga. It is noted by Gonzaga Nation that Brett Yormark flew to Spokane, Washington and met with Gonzaga officials to talk about them coming to the Big 12. That at Big 12 Women's Basketball Media Day, he comes out and says there's nothing imminent, which is just him saying effectively nothing, and that he would only make make a move that would be of value for membership, which again is him saying nothing. That's, you know... Are you going to are you going to open another business? Are you going to franchise out your business? And you respond to that with, oh, we're going to do whatever makes the most sense moving forward. That uh, you didn't say anything. You just said, we'll do whatever we need to do to do things like, OK, then I guess you're going to get done what needs to be done. Right. There's nothing there. And I, as I'm sitting there daydreaming, n- neglecting my work, avoiding the things that I do at ESPN Central Texas, I thought, ah, oh, that died down quick. And what about what about an update on Oregon State, Washington State? Remember how how confident some of the guests on this show were, how even I I was pretty confident at one point in time that Oregon State, Washington State, the Big 12 would work out. Where did where did that go? Where, where's the update? Here? Where's the follow up? It was just all of this, this smoke and mirrors, all of this talk, you know, the Monty show got involved and a 365. Those guys are talking about it and folks are tweeting about it. And there, there are sources here and sources there. And then, bam. Middle of the season hits. We haven't heard anything about this in three weeks. Well, on on the Oregon State, Washington State front, I'm going to give you this. When it comes to Big 12 expansion, which is still a very hot topic right now, the, the, the league is not going to look the way that it does in 10 years. I can guarantee you that. If, if I plug your kids ears, if in 10 years, the Big 12 is exactly what it is today, I will on a live stream, on a live stream, I'll, 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 I'll live stream it for you. Uh, take my bare hands, pull out my hamstring, eat it raw. Yep, 100%. Clip it. Bam, right there. If in 10 years, the Big 12 looks exactly exactly like it does today, then I'll I'll do that. Because it, it's not. This is ever-changing, especially when expansion becomes such a hot thing in college athletics. And so many people say that it is a, a top-down format is on its way and that there will be power conferences. So to me, the topic of Washington State and Oregon State being in the Big 12 is still something that's relevant. It is not something that just went away overnight. <laughs> It's thin air. It's gone. There there was not a happenstance that took place over the course of the last month where I said, where anybody else said, oh, wow, now it looks a lot less likely that Oregon State and Washington State are coming to the Big 12. The big thing that everybody was waiting on, the word is waiting. It's not, oh, you know, there there are some talks, but it's not, you know, is it going to happen or there's a chance that this person could initiate? No, there's not even the word initiate. It is simply waiting on what's going to occur now, what's what's effectively in the process of occurring, and that's the lawsuit between the Pac-12, Oregon State, and Washington State. And as more comes out of that lawsuit, as we see what assets those two schools hold in their hands, then we get a better idea of if the Big 12 has to take them from a financial and fiscal standpoint, if, to use Brett Yormark's exact words, his exact verbiage, if there is value for membership, there is nothing imminent. I'm with him there. Unless there's value 
for membership. Now, your Mark reportedly wanted the Zags to join by 2425, but league members had a quote laundry list of questions over revenue sharing and scheduling that your Mark would need to bring to Gonzaga first. So, when it comes to the idea of expansion, there are the X's and O's to tie up on the Gonzaga side. And to me, that bleeds over to the Washington State, Oregon State side. H- how does this affect you if you're a Washington State, Oregon State fan? This is the future of your team. That one's obvious. How does this affect you as a TCU fan, an Oklahoma State fan, a Kansas State fan? This is the future of your team. Also obvious. This is the idea of w- where the Big 12 could be in two years, could be heading out west. W- where the schedule is right now for the Big 12 could be tweaked. Um. I don't want to use the crutch of, of, oh, well, the schedule's been released. That's set. God, no. That's not, oh, no, whoa. Not how that works. It's not a, oh, well, they made the schedule, so it has to be that. No, sir. Um, the, the teams that have been scheduled to play in 2027 aren't already buying their plane tickets. They're not already preparing. Fans aren't are buying their hotel rooms right now because of the things that might change. And again, what did Brett Yormark say? To use his very language, there's nothing imminent unless there is value for membership. While it's while it's effectively saying nothing, you're blowing a little hot air up our skirts here. At the same time, you're saying, look, if something does make sense, it's not off the table. That's not a complete no. So what I did, what I derived from the Gonzaga situation, the value for membership is him saying, look, that doesn't just apply to Gonzaga. It doesn't just apply to the idea of having them as basketball only, which I am not. Um, I think it was a little more on board with it right at the beginning, right when it first came out of Gonzaga and basketball. To me, the immediate thought was, what could go, you know, what, why was wrong with this? What isn't good about this? If it brings the league money, if you're looking at a Gonzaga program that can bring you viewership that has one of the best viewed national championship games of the, the Baylor Gonzaga national championship game has had more viewers than any World Series game of the last five, six years. That's saying a lot, man. About a program that, that those are two programs that would be in the Big 12. It'd be it'd be a huge addition for the conference. So where do we set with those three teams? Kind of in the same spot we did a month ago. Actually, in fairly the same spot of when the dust was all kicked up. Honestly, the dust on some of this stuff was probably kicked up prematurely. The dust should really be going right now. The, the, the videos that people are SEO, plug and play, big title, poppy thumbnail, and I'm... I'm I'm not exempt from those. I won't pretend to be. I won't pretend that the stuff that I put out is not tailored for you to click on. And I'd be stupid not to, right? But what I'm going to give you is I'm going to deliver whatever the title says, whatever the thumbnail says, that's what I'm going to bring you. It's not going to be a, you know, I would hate for Oregon State and Washington State to come to the Big 12. I'm not going to title it that and then give you something different in the video. What I want to give you here is that the update in this scenario that I have not given you, the update is that things are the same. Not that they've gotten worse, not that the odds have gotten worse for expansion with those three teams, Gonzaga, Washington State, and Oregon State. Not that the odds have gotten better, per se, but that now, especially on the lawsuit side with two of those three schools, you're going to see more clarity. I also am fairly confident that we will not see the move for Gonzaga to come in in 2024-25. But if you will remember, if you'll remember, the Big 12 is okay working to effectively midnight, right? Your mark's okay working until midnight. It could still be this basketball season where we find out something new. So keep an ear to the ground, keep a finger on the pulse because we are still as in the thick of this as we were a month ago. Now, how do we keep Texas and Oklahoma out of the big 12 championship game? How do we do it? Let's find out this locked on big 12, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. I ever tell you about how I make my money? I do it at prize picks. I don't do it playing tiddlywinks in my cubicle. I go to prizepicks.com and I play prize picks. With basketball season here, you can now pick a combo projections across football and basketball from specials, a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half point combo of three pointers made plus receptions. But ding! $10 to win 200 bucks, maybe. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now do community plays under the Provost tab of the app to view entries from some of the most popular Prize Pick players right now. Right now, go to prizepicks.com forward slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. I put in 100 bucks. They give you a deposit match of 100 bucks. Go to prizepicks.com forward slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Right now, prize picks your place 
to make money. I like when you make money. I like when I make money. Prize picks. I've been playing it recently and I love it. Visit them today. Okay. Texas, Oklahoma. The opportunity for those two teams to play for a Big 12 championship is still in play. One of the things that I love, um, just to start this conversation, Drake Stoops, great name, came out this week with with the media and effectively said, you know, hey, I know we can't entirely control our own destiny. It's not in our hands right now. Um, We just hope that fate is on our side. And it brought me joy. Reading that headline, we hope that fate is on our side, brought me joy. That Oklahoma's not in a... We control our path. We can go win a Big 12 championship. We've got an opportunity to do something great in our last season of the league. Nope. It's, I hope that uh, that God will help us the rest of the way. That's amazing. I love that that's the place that Oklahoma's in. Now, Texas is a bit of a different story. For Oklahoma, you're tied in a hodgepodge with five other teams. We went over earlier this week the very complex system the Big 12 goes through for a tiebreaker and how we could get to the point where we go into a coin flip for some of these teams to get to the Big 12 championship game. As it sits, there are only two teams that truly control their destiny, those being Texas and Oklahoma State. For Oklahoma State, which we've already covered earlier this week, you've got to do it. You've got to go to Arlington. This is this is a must. UCF is winnable. Houston winnable. BYU certainly winnable at home. You should be, you'll be favored all three of those. You should win all three of those. Don't slip up against UCF and John Rice Plumley this week, please. We are all counting on Oklahoma State to just do the normal thing, which Mike Gundy is so bad at, the normal thing, and go to the Big 12 championship. Then it becomes, the, the issue here is not Oklahoma. I think the rest of the way for OU, sitting at 7-2, and two, that West Virginia game, the West Virginia game coming up this week, that's not easy. C.J. Donaldson's not easy to deal with. There are a lot of, to me, hear me out, there are a lot of similarities between West Virginia and Oklahoma State. And we just saw the Cowboys beat the Sooners. Now, that game's in Norman. It's a night game in Norman, too. But the way that West Virginia runs the football with a couple of different guys, the way that Garrett Green's got that dog in him, the way that the West Virginia defense can step up. We have seen them step up. Oklahoma shouldn't be exactly confident with this game. Then going on the road against BYU and what could be a night game. That's not easy. Then playing TCU at home. While you should win, TCU seems to have some weird moxie thing now. We'll talk about that later in the week, about how TCU could possibly knock off Texas, but they they give you that sort of feeling. You're hearing from a lot of TCU fans that they're almost too confident against Texas this week. For Oklahoma, I'm taking them out of the equation. Today, today, Wednesday, November 8th, whatever time you're watching this, I can promise you Oklahoma is not going to the Big 12 championship game. I, I don't even know that they'll be unscathed in that in the next three games. And even if they are unscathed in the next three games, they're going to need some help. Help could come in the form of Texas losing, but then you'd be in a tie and, and very well with the rest of Texas schedule. They've got Iowa State, who's still in the conversation, Texas Tech, who's still somehow in the conversation. They could lose to TCU. If you get into a tiebreaker situation, if you're Oklahoma, it's not as simple as, oh, we beat Texas, we get to go to the Big 12 championship game. That's not how this is going to work down the stretch because of the hodgepodge of teams. I am counting Oklahoma entirely out. So if if the question, and you see it on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, is how do we ensure Texas and Oklahoma suck? How do we ensure those two teams don't go to Arlington? I can already assure you, already assure you, one of them is not. Oklahoma is out. Now it comes to Texas. This TCU game shouldn't be complex. It's a night game in Fort Worth. That isn't scary. Um, I've been to my fair share of night games in Fort Worth. While I actually, more so than most, like Amon G. Carter, I like the way it's set up. I like where it is on campus. I like its proximity. Um, I, I generally enjoy the TCU campus and location. I'm surprised the crowd is not typically better at Amon G. Carter. What I really value about it is it holds 45,000 people, 50,000 people uh, standing room only. And it feels bigger when you walk in. It just feels bigger than a McLean stadium at Baylor. Um, even to an extent feels bigger than a Boone Pickens because of how it goes up. Now, is that, is that conducive for noise? No. Is the fan uh, fans always all there? No, but against Texas at night, give me a little juice. Give me a little something. Give me a little Lupton magic creeping its way to Amon G. Carter. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Texas has a harder road down the stretch than Oklahoma State. 
True. For sure. For sure. But I don't know if TCU's where the rubber meets the road. We'll get into that later this later this week. But what what I need more than anything here is for Texas to lose to an Iowa State. Because TCU is out of the conversation for a Big 12 championship. We're not still mathematically they're not still there. If Texas loses to Iowa State, then Oklahoma and Iowa State both hold the tiebreaker over Texas and Oklahoma beat Iowa state. So Oklahoma would have a shot to get in. But at that point, then you're looking to like, well, wait a second. Cause Oklahoma lost to Kansas. So now Kansas, they are the ones that get in. And then you start to get into tiebreakers where you decide, Oh, wow, there's a shot for Kansas state to get to the big 12 championship, keeping Oklahoma and Texas out. We, we don't need to circle the TCU game as much as we need to circle this Iowa state and Texas game coming up next week. That is the one. That's where we're going to make our money. We're going to get rich is that night game in Ames, Iowa, Texas, and Iowa State. All the money in the pot goes on that one. We throw the TCU game out, though I think TCU could stun Texas. It's not impossible the way the Longhorns played last week and two weeks ago against Houston. Backup quarterback facing a TCU team that needs to win. An offensive coordinator who needs to win. Then final game of the year for UT is Texas Tech. That game at home, predicted preseason, it would be an upset that Texas Tech would win. Now it doesn't look, like, doesn't look like that would be the case, but there's about the same amount of chance that Texas will lose to TCU as they will Texas Tech. I just, while I don't, I, I want it to come against Iowa State for the mathematics of it. I, I need it to come against somebody. We can keep Oklahoma out. I already think they're out. I think they're done. When you got players that are talking about it's in God's hands, we need fate on our side. For Texas, with a loss this week, particularly with a loss against Iowa State next week, they'll be in that same boat. I need that. I also need to tell you about the 2023-24 Baylor men's basketball team. Thank God. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show, my friends, is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to make money. When I'm feeling, you know, like I just need a little, uh, what do they call passive income? FanDuel's where I go. This NFL season, you can score early. FanDuel, the number one sports book in America, gives new customers $150 in bonus bets if you hit a $5 money line bet. So you go, you place five bucks on, say, Texas this week. Say you like the Texas Longhorns to get it done against TCU. You place that bet, it hits, bam. 150 bucks in free play off your $5 money line bet that you hit. That's not bad, right? I would like to think that's not bad. So right now at FanDuel, they are, uh, they're always coming up with new fun offers and new fun stuff. I'm a FanDuel stan, will always be. It's where you can go to make money. I'm telling you, passive income is the way that I put it. FanDuel.com. Right now, use promo code locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season and get that $150 in bonus bets when your team wins at FanDuel. Finally, I can talk about the Baylor Bears doing something good. I, I, if you're, if you're looking for perspective on this game from the outside, if you are a fan of another Big 12 team and you're wondering, oh, why do I have to sit here and listen to Baylor men's basketball? You do for one second, just humor me. This team is more legit than I expected. I had them picked fifth in my Big 12 preseason poll. I thought it would take them a long time to figure things out. It took them mm, 32 minutes to figure things out. And then all of a sudden, they were a world-beating basketball team. I'll, I'll say, for Baylor fans, you now feel what Kansas has felt for decades. Football being so terrible, that first taste of basketball, that first basketball win, you just think, hmm, I'm back. Sports are back. I'm a fan again. That's where Baylor fans sit right now. Watching this game, Jacoby Walter is not just the best freshman in the Big 12, but very well. This is not hyperbolic. This is not me blowing hot air up your skirt. He could very well be the best freshman in America. He scored 28 points, which is the most points from a Big 12 player in their debut since 2007. I think 2023 Baylor men's basketball could beat 2023 Baylor football. And then Eve Misi, the big kid who reclassified, with a slam of a lifetime to put Baylor up late in this game and ultimately give the Bears an 88-82 to 82 win over the Auburn Tigers. A couple of notes that I have here. Jonathan Chamo Chachua is a name that you probably remember as a Big 12 fan. You've seen him play. He's been around the league for a long time. 
Langston Love is a guy who's kind of floated around for a couple of years at Baylor and somebody that you that you could well know his third year in the program. For those two guys, I, I'm sad and I'm sorry. They couldn't keep up. There's a reason that Eves Missy was in the game late. He was gassed for sure. You could tell that he had he gone a lot. Josh Ojean Wuna got a lot of great playing time for Baylor as well. Jonathan Chamo Chachua, everyday John, Langston Love have lost a step. Now, Langston Love was was clutch with a three-pointer late for Baylor, but when I was building a preview for the Bears team, I thought those two guys were going to be you know, starters that brought the juice, the ump for the Bears, and they could bring you what they, were, what they once did or what they were supposed to. For Langston Love, he could have been a one-and-done had he not gotten injured in a scrimmage before his freshman season a couple of years ago. Since then, he hasn't been exactly at a starting level, starting Big 12 level, a la the case last night. For Jonathan Chamo Chachua, God for I mean, I you know, God bless him. I can't blame him. Has lost a step after a gruesome career altering injury. Both those guys bring a lot of solid work to the Baylor men's basketball program, but they're not gonna be the catalysts that ultimately win you a basketball game. Instead, it's gonna be guys like Jacoby Walter, who stepped up to be one of the best freshmen, who could be one of the best freshmen in college basketball. A guy like Ray J. Dennis, who didn't get his playing time in the second half, but when he did, was nails. You saw him in the first half turn the ball over seven times. In the second half, he calmed it down. He slowed it down. It felt like the, the pace of the game was moving too quickly for the Baylor Bears. And, and you got smart. You got Jacoby Walter in the paint. And not only that, you got him into the paint, get him to the free throw line. He was 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Not only that, you got him outside, four for seven from three. He is, somebody tweeted it out, Royden Ogletree is a... Uh, just Baylor legend tweeted it out and said, he is what Keontae George was supposed to be. And, and that's yeah, hundred percent. It was, it didn't feel like volume shooting when Jacoby Walter took a shot. It was a smart shot. He used his 34 minutes in a very positive way. Those 28 points again, being the most by a big 12 newcomer since 2007, double digit points for Eve Misi in 18 minutes. He put up 10, four for six from the free throw line. That could have been a little better. Two blocks, two steals. Defensively was great. 10 steals as a team for Baylor. Three of them from Jaden Nunn, who didn't give you a huge offensive output, but was so good defensively. Ray J. Dennis, another guy that picked up a couple of steals and felt like settled into the game in the second half. And limited minutes might have helped them down the stretch as well. I do. You didn't see a lot of Antoine Grimes or Miro Little. But that displays the depth of what Baylor has. When Caleb Lohner was out there, only got to play 12 minutes. He didn't stink. I'll give him that. Former BYU player Caleb Lohner plays very hard. Maybe a little bit too hard, a little too fast. Josh Ojanwuna giving you fairly good five rebounds in his 16 minutes. And in total, the most impressive part with this is that the Bears, which, by the way, Jonathan Chamo Chachua, one rebound, no points, and only seven minutes of play. Again, Lost a step after injury for Langston Love. Did get to play 20 minutes, three for nine, fine. Two for four from deep, fine. Overall, didn't look like he could run the team. The most impressive part then with those two guys who were supposed to be staples, not being what you expected necessarily from a fan perspective, at least. The most impressive part is coming back from being down by nine points in the second half, being down by five inside of four minutes to go at a neutral site. Against Bruce Pearl, Bruce Pearl led team. And while Auburn unraveled, while Auburn fell apart, you came up big. And and really the apex of this, Baylor has the biggest win of the Big 12 basketball season so far. Baylor has the marquee game, the first ESPN basketball game of 2023. They have the win of the Big 12 season so far. That's big for Baylor fan base. It's been reeling here lately. The Bears have the ultimate Big 12 basketball victory through the first 48 hours of the season. That was much needed and big to see a young team grow up right in front of your eyes and show that it can be a force in Big 12 play, that it can play legitimate defense, that it can scare opposition. I don't know. And I I, I know the opposing team scoring 80 points weird to say legitimate defense, but truly it was stupid offensive turnovers that led to a lot of Auburn points, a lot of Auburn free throws overall. The defense was impressive. 
for a young team to be down like that, who's not played together, to come back and win it, not just play it close, but win it, this is a scary Baylor team. They're going to give a lot of the Big 12 a run for its money because of how wily, aggressive, and overall, this is some ratty basketball. This is some slick, gym rat basketball. They play hard. And, oh, gross is the wrong word. Bratty, man. It's just what I just, oh, in your grill. Tough. Fun to watch. Turn them on. Watch the highlights. This has been It Always Will Be. I'll see you guys tomorrow. That was a little kiss that I gave you. <laughs> um, always a pleasure to talk Big 12. Let's do our best bets tomorrow. Let's win you some money, right? Happy Wednesday. Have a good one at work. Please do. On, on me. Have one on me. This has been It Always Will Be. Blocked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.